What's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter, and Instagram followers? It's your boy No Name back at it with another Giants update video. Uh, today, I'm a bit late, but I'm here anyway for Dion Buchanan signing. Welcome, Dion Buchanan. Uh, it took them about, I don't know, like a week or two weeks later than I would have expected. This guy was uh, released from the Bucks. Um, in week three i believe or week four and we had since then to sign them on you know because that was since around the time where all of our middle linebackers starting middle linebackers kind of went down and besides that we were in need of linebackers anyway Dion buchanan is a guy who had major successes in the james betcher system he was the, really the first money linebacker in the nfl because that's the that's the position, you know, that hybrid safety linebacker position that James Petra sort of created back in Arizona. And it's definitely shown in his stats that his best years were with Betcher, you know, up until 2017 when Betcher left. He was putting up relatively good numbers. That being said, his best year was in 2015. This is four years ago. And this is definitely a signing, I think not for this year, but for maybe next year and beyond, depending on how he performs. But, you know, I think it's like they're signing him and they're kind of like giving him sort of a trial year. Like, if you're good, if you still got some juice left, you can stick with us until next year. And the reason I say that is because since 2015, which was his best year, that's when he had uh, 109 tackles. You know, 90 of them were solo tackles. Three sacks, five QB, I mean, sorry, um, six QB hits, 11 tackles for losses, just in general. And even an interception return, but just in general, a really, really good year, a great year even for a linebacker, you know, for a guy that shift, shifted from safety to linebacker. And then since then, you know, his stats kind of went down a bit. The next year, he had 89 tackles, 64 uh, solo, only one QB hit. The year after that in 2017, which was Betcher's last year there, he had 82, then 58, uh, 82 combined, 58 solo two QB hits, and so on and so forth. Granted, he hasn't played a full season since 2015 also, so that definitely plays a part into, you know, his stats decreasing, but that just means he can't stay healthy, and um, I hope for us that he maybe he can stay healthy, you know, maybe he can get back into his uh, old habits with James Betcher, get back to that old performance, similarly to how Marcus Golden on our team is doing right now. Golden, guy we signed in the offseason, uh, very cheap contract, just like Dion Buchanan, which is another reason why I like the signing. You know, it's basically nothing to us. It's just a vet minimum deal uh, for Marcus Goldman. I think it was like a $3 million deal or something like that. And he reunited with Betcher. He had the same thing. Best season in 2015. Uh, injuries in 2016 and 17 kind of kept him out. You know, I didn't really recover until this year, until he himself, you know, finally said, yeah, I feel the same as I did. He told interviewers and then he comes out and he's having his best year since that 2015-2016 season, you know. So hopefully we can get the same thing on Dion Buchanan and that's what I'm hoping for because I think he still has a bit of some juice left. Uh, either way, it's definitely going to be an upgrade at some of our spots. You know, we have Alec Ogletree back, but then we have David Mayo beside him, who is doing a phenomenal job considering where he's at. But because he's doing better than we expected, I think we Giants fans are kind of blowing it out of proportion. So I definitely think if you could come in and he could fill in that spot, it would be great. But now, we signed Dion Buchanan. As it, and as you can see in the bottom, you know, tile there, I say, now what? And I say that because what are we going to do with Alec Ogletree? At least for next year, maybe not this year. You know, trade deadline is just in, I don't know, like seven days at the time of this recording. What are we going to do with Alec Ogletree? Dude is, um, he was the one that we kind of picked up to be our money linebacker spot. And, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to be that to stay on the team. But in general, everybody knows Ogletree is one of the dudes that might get traded or cut after this year, maybe within this week, simply because, um, he's not worth his contract which isn't even a blasphemous contract it's just i don't know it's something we could definitely get off the books and maybe sign a better player with and people think that he's been underperforming and in my opinion i like alec ogletree i think we paid for what we got uh we definitely traded for what we get we only gave up like what a, a third and a fifth or something for this guy whatever the case may be 
I think he's a good middle linebacker, and that's that's exactly what we traded for from the Rams, a good middle linebacker. We didn't trade for a world beat or anything, and I think people might be expecting a little bit too much from him. However, it's definitely a strong possibility that the Giants are going to get some good offers for this guy, and I say if you get, like, if you get offered a fourth or anything better, trade him. Knowing the Giants, though, if they get offered, like, a fifth, they'll probably trade him, but I don't think we should because he's been doing... He's been doing relatively good. I, I like the way he's been performing for us. And I think we'd be a little too hard on him because we're expecting too much. But he's performing just the way he has and maybe even a little bit better with us than when he was with the Rams. So, yeah, there's that. And there's also, you know, the this move of picking up Deion Buchanan was definitely a buyer move, which I'm not sure the Giants are in a position to do. They're more in that seller position, which is why I brought up Ogletree also. Um, he's definitely a dude we could give away. When you're in that seller position, another name that's come up, which I think is a bit blasphemous, is Golden Tate. And I'll just mention that for a hot second because it's been coming up. And I'll just say, nope, that's a stupid idea. Golden Tate, four-year contract. Uh, he hasn't even played a full season here yet. Uh, I say keep him. He's a great safety blanket. He's a great receiver for a young developing QB. And in general, he's one of the best out there for, uh, you know, and in the slot receiver position and whatnot, I say, why in the world would we trade him? He hasn't even had a chance to sort of prove himself and, you know, get his toes wet yet. You know, like, in general, this offense has been suffering. You can't just start training away pieces on our offense because of something that the coach has been doing wrong or, you know, failures on the offensive line and stuff like that. And another name, speaking of offensive line, that's come up is Nate Solder. And as much as I would want to trade away Nate Solder, um, maybe even back to New England. You know, give them back to New England. Let them. And usually when New England wants to trade for a player, it means that you're on the losing end. But I don't really care. Solder is definitely somebody that's not worth his contract. But it's because of that contract that we're not going to trade him. Uh, the cap hit and also no team would want to take that on. <laughs> but then also we have nobody else to replace him. I think the best uh, way to go for our offensive line, you know, thinking long term would be to ship Nate, Nate Solder a right tackle for next year. Pick up one of the best tackles in uh, the upcoming draft. And that's going to be our two main focuses, picking up the best tackle, picking up the best pass rusher. You know, people have been talking about wide receiver. I think you could find somebody good in, in the second or in third round. But that uh, offensive line and that, that pass rusher, I would want to get that over with because we've been sort of tackling those in the second and third round for the past couple years. And I just want to get like a, somebody that's a bona fide star already, not really a project like a Lorenzo Carter or a O'Shane Zimenez. Or, you know, even, you know, a second round guy that's really good but still has his flaws in Will Hernandez. I, is it too much as a Giants fan to want an already polished product? No, I don't think so. Another name that has been thrown around, which uh, isn't as ludicrous, but it's definitely a possibility, is Janoris Jenkins. Similarly to Alec Ogletree, this is a name that's been around since, like, really the offseason and even last year. Uh, people wanted Jenkins to be out here for a while or they thought that um, the Giants would trade him out here for a while. This is somebody else that uh, I don't know why. Like Just like Alec Ogre, I just I don't think we should trade him because I think he's performing well enough uh, for his contract. In fact, I remember in 2016, he was the only person that really lived up to that contract. You know, that massive offseason deals that the Giants had for all their defensive players. In 2017... He had a relatively good season. 2018 was really his only kind of disappointing one with us, the Giants. And then this year, statistically, he's back to having one of his best years. It's like I'm saying, statistically, you know, he's kind of putting up a better stats than he did in 2016, which was hands down his best year with us. But we all know stats are and everything is the way you play in the game. And Jenkins has had a very inconsistent up and down year. There's times like the Buccaneers game when he can't defend the pass to save his life. And then there's times like the Redskins game. Uh, where he's the NFC Defensive Player of the Week, can do anything you ask him to do. And, of course, those are two different you know, ends of the spectrum in terms of level of competition. So that also kind of paint a picture for you as to how he's performing now. Either way, he's still showing me that he can still get the job done. And that's what we need in our secondary right now, along with that experience there for the young guys. Because if we get rid of him, we got a bunch of young guys out there. And, yeah, you could roll out with them. And hope that throughout the rest of the season they'll improve and next year they could come back and do something. But realistically speaking, I think we should keep him till the end of the year. Release him maybe after the year ends or trade him after the year ends. Just because I want him there to help the development of the young guys. But like I said, statistically he's having a great year. 
um, and that could probably mean something for a team that's interested in him. You know, one team that comes to mind that I would never trade to simply because they're one of our biggest rivals, the Philadelphia Eagles. They definitely need some cornerback help. You know, a couple other teams out there like uh, the Ravens, even though they already got Marcus Peter, maybe the Chiefs. Um, you know, other teams out there, I didn't really, you know, kind of going off script here, but uh, though there are definitely teams out there that need cornerbacks. It's a very needy position in the league, and if we can get something like, I would say a uh, fifth or better for Jenkins, then yeah, do it. You know, build up a lot of uh, draft picks. You know, build up a nice stock of them because we might need them in the coming years. Uh, I still think, even though this season isn't turning out to what I hoped it would be or other Giants fans would hope it would be, which is like that range of seven and nine to nine and seven wins. You know, that improving team type of. Uh, record you know it's like some type of stat out there in the nfl teams with a seven and nine record that are like in their second year of rebuilding usually make a jump in their third year or something like that i still think um next year we're going to be a competing team and with a lot of draft picks hopefully with a you know a nice stock of it and a nice draft selection place you know maybe top 10 or something we can get a lot of good players to come in here help fill out some of our holes along with a good free agency period because we're going to have a lot of money and then we come back next year better than ever strong you know competing for the playoffs all that but that's that's literally like the most optimistic view of everything but yeah jenkins is definitely a dude we could trade um he's definitely somebody of value he's probably arguably one of our best players if not the best player on our defense right now so he's definitely we're definitely gonna get something good back from him but yeah that's about it guys um just want to talk about the Dion buchanan trade real quick and maybe you know get out a couple of scenarios you know they are scenarios that has been talked about before on our channels but i want to give my take on it because the Dion buchanan trade for i mean signing for as good as it was it did make me question a little bit whether we're going to be buyers or sellers this year we're still two games out of the nfc east although it's very much you know possible that we're are we're already out of the playoffs you know two and five record you know it's very hard to come back from that but we'll see what the giants do that, that was the only puzzling thing about this signing. It was a buyer move, not a seller move. And you could argue we should very much be sellers. Let me know what you all think. Put your comments down below. Like, share, and please subscribe to my channel. Helps me out a lot. I'm out. You're... Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yeah.